How's everybody doing today? I don't know if you're catching me on camera. I'll have to check later. Um, let's show you some stuff. So the 68 Pontiac Firebird has gone back home. I did a video of it sitting on the trailer before it left. And as you can see, we've already got a bunch of uh, Camaro parts here sitting on the floor. And this would be why. So this would be a 67 RS convertible. I don't know much more about the car than that. Um, but yeah, so apparently these are pretty sweet for obvious reasons. So you can see that was the original color of the car. It was like a burgundy red. I'm sure guys can comment on what color that was on the fire or on the Camaros. It's kind of cool that I got a Camaro in the shop because we always get Firebirds in the shop and I never get to see Camaros. This one ain't cloned or anything like that. It's an actual Camaro, so that's pretty cool. As far as original goes, I was shocked to find out the tail pan is actually original. But the trunk lid, the quarters, the doors, the wheel houses, there's a cowl hood, all the fenders. So this was basically one of those cars that uh, looked okay but had no bottom. It was drug out of a field. Um, well, let's come up to the front. So not only does this have a full floor, but I believe he said it was done right up to here and all the way under. You can see here, they had to do a repair up in here and add a piece because it must have been rotten up here too. So they had to fix that because the new, the new floor only comes up, you know, like I guess where the stock would come. But the cool thing is it has all the body mounts and all the stuff. And it's got the convertible X-frame, which probably didn't come with the floor because it's got some extreme welds on it. So someone did a nice job. And basically, it comes right back to here. And then this, I believe, was an old original piece that they probably had to weld back in. It's hard to say, like the welds, like you can see there how the weld looks rough, but on the original cars, they weren't real nice either. But one thing I noticed, all the welding, whoever did this car, before they lost track of what they were doing, um, if anything, it's over -weld. They did a good job, so the car's gonna be solid. But anyway, so I know there's a brand new floor pan in it, and when you're under the car, it looks brand new. Um, all the mounts for the suspension, new. Brand new trunk, frame rails, very cool. And it looks the way it does because uh, it was done five, six years ago. And then the guy had it sitting in a, in a garage and then it sat last winter in one of those uh, tent garages or whatever because the guy was moving. But anyway, we finally got the car here. Now I'm not gonna be painting this car in the shop. Uh, this one's gonna be a little different. So what we're gonna do, what I'm contracted to do on this car, we're gonna paint the whole bottom of the car it's some kind of black epoxy and uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet but when we get there I'll definitely do a video on it um, you can see where the a pillar and all that see that's all kind of original stuff but then they had to do a little bit of work you can see right there some work was done that's gonna have to be cleaned out when they do the body work but we're just doing between the two sills and uh, not the wheel wells but from the sill of the wheel well in so the whole bottom of the car is what we're doing and the reason I'm going to be doing that is a friend of mine took on the job of doing a suspension on this car. Ignore the frame, that's not what's going on, but we will talk about that. So she's got brand new doors. Very cool. So this was, I guess, the rockers seem to be good, but I mean, they used a lot of this gray epoxy when the car was sandblasted and epoxied. And then at some point they put this thick black primer on it, probably just to seal it because they knew it was going to sit for a while. And then of course, the black on these panels, well who knows, is probably just the EDP coating. But none of it's come off or anything, so luckily we don't got to deal with that. So basically the front end was hanging off the car, just sitting there with a couple bolts. I tore it all off. We're going to send those parts in this hood um, back to the customer's house because 
Again, I'm not getting involved with the body on this one. We're just going to go underneath the car, paint the whole bottom of the car. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to put probably the most expensive Ride Tech suspension on this car. Which seems really weird to me. Because, you know, it's a convertible. But if you got the money and you want to do it, it can definitely be done. So let me see how much light we got down here. Yeah, you can see like it's... Uh... So anything that was kind of peeled off the little bit of black was gone over and somebody kind of just spray painted a little bit of etching primer on it to protect it. Basically just to get it to me. So we're going to go underneath the car, sand all that down everywhere, and uh, paint the whole bottom of the car. There's a brand new spring perches up there. I don't know if you can see them from here. We're going to drop those out. After it's painted, basically, we're going to do a four link in the back. So those perches have to be changed. And then there's a saddle that goes up underneath to hold the upper links. We're going to use the axle. But we're going to cut all the stuff off it, and then we're going to have to weld on the brackets that come with the Ride Tech kit. Now what I'm going to do with that is set it all up to where we want it to be. We're going to tack weld it, and then I'm going to bring it to the machine shop where they're going to, you know, they're going to like stack of dimes weld it, which is what we want. Something solid and nice to look at. Um, you know, because I'm a MIG welder, so yeah. Welding brackets to an axle uh, that's on a car that's going to have 550 horse I'm told. So the plan for this car, the owner wants to put 550 horse, uh, it's a Crate LS3 and a Tremec 5 speed. So we're going to paint the bottom of the floor and everything. We're going to come up to here so that all that is covered. And that's happening in my shop. And then I'm going to help out my buddy with the suspension build. And back in the day in the 90s, I was involved with race cars and stuff, so this will be easy. But anyway, well, it won't be easy, but it'll be fun. So once we get that done, um, now this frame was just slid underneath and bolted in for transport. So we have a, a frame with nothing on it. And of course... It's going to be built at my buddy's shop. He's going to put all the front suspension brakes and stuff. So I'm going to roll this frame out. And this frame, um, well, let's have a look at it. So this would be a Hotchkiss setup. New shocks, springs, and everything. And that was about two years ago. And then it's been sitting. So we're going to have to clean it up, obviously. But we're going to clean it up, but keep it on this frame, because this frame is going to go into our 69 Firebird. Uh, and that's not going to happen right away, but we'll do videos on that one because over the next year or two, that's a car we're building. And it's going to have a 6-liter LS in it with a cam and a bunch of stuff. So we've got the Hotchkiss for the other car for the back already, so this is just the stuff for the front to match it. But, uh, yeah, so it's an interesting car. When the 68 Firebird left, I thought... You know, we'll finally get to work on something that's not an F-body car. And, uh, you know, we kept talking about this car. And basically, the friend of mine towed both vehicles. So he dropped this off here. And the next morning, we loaded the Firebird onto the same trailer. And we sent that packing back to where it goes. Uh, heard back from the owner. He's super happy. Loves the white and black. So, success. Um, so after I'm done painting the bottom and help my buddy with the, sp the suspension on the car. It's gonna go to my buddy's place where he's gonna do the brake booster, the wiring, and a bunch of this stuff. Uh, so I asked him today if I could go and do a few videos here and there, just updates. So if anyone wants to follow along uh, with the 67 convertible, that's cool, we'll keep updates. Now, by the time he's done that, which I'm figuring will be spring 2024, it's gonna go to another shop uh, down in the Napanee area and I'll go down to that shop, actually, at least twice. And again, show you the process of what they're doing. So they're going to do the interior, the convertible top, and the paint. So, And because of the shop it's going to, it's kind of a high-end spot. So it's going to be a really, really cool car. So I just thought we'd share that. Definitely fun. 
You can see we had this set up for the Firebird. It's already got the Firebird wheels. I don't know if we're using them, but they're 15s. So we do have sets of those, but we're probably gonna go to like a 17 inch monster wide wheel on it because it's gonna be kind of an over the top car. But as far as uh, throwing dollars at suspension goes, this is gonna have probably the most expensive suspension available for this car. And I don't know if that makes it good or bad. Putting a four link in the back when you're running a straight axle anyway, to me seems counterintuitive. If I'm gonna do all that work to modify it, I'm thinking Corvette suspension. But uh, this car's not gonna be a race car or anything like that. This is just, uh, the owner can afford to do it and he thinks it's the coolest thing to do and it's what he wants to do. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to looking at the ride tech stuff to see how it fits under the car. And we'll go from there. But in the meantime, can you imagine like the shape of this car? Super clean, no holes, no rot. If you're gonna rebuild something, it's really nice if you can get it to this. Now, with the white Firebird we just did, as I explained in other videos, it was a repaint and then we fixed a bunch of stuff before the repaint, because, you know, things had to be attended. Now, that car, was an original door, original quarter, and so on car. And yes, it had a few patches in it, but it wasn't, it wasn't something that you'd cut apart because they're only that way once. So, but if you find a field turd where everything is gone, including the floors and frames and everything, you can do this. But this isn't going to be like a $5,000 shell you buy on Marketplace. This is, uh, there's a lot of money in jigging this up and doing, doing it. Now, if you've got the time and you're a DIY guy and you want to build one yourself, there's a lot of time involved in welding. I'm going to say you can afford to do this. So the convertible quarters, as I'm told, come up to in here someplace. And then up to here. Someone filled these in. We don't really like that, but I don't got to deal with it, so that's okay. Could be why the project stalled. It's hard to say. But anyway, at any rate, we're going uh, to do what we're going to do. But uh, look, a guy at home in his own garage could do this, right? There, You can get plans on the internet. There's a lot of YouTube videos. You can weld up a jig. Um, gosh, I'd name people, but... Usually I don't do that unless I ask permission first, so I won't. But there's a lot of cool YouTube channels that show how to do that. So once you line it up and do everything, you can, you can do this in your garage. Now, the upside to buying a car that's rough but, say, complete, you'll have a dash, you'll have, you know, clusters and glove box door. This is clearly a car that's been completely, completely redone. The dash pan here is new because um, they tend to rust in the corners and whatnot. Hard to say where. Actually, this one probably all rotted here. And the reason I say that, if you look here on the cowl cover here, you can see where this has been, you know, there's a piece of sheet metal welded in, and it goes all the way down to here. Now, here you see some pinholes that have been sandblasted and whatnot. I imagine the body shop's just going to weld those up. Not a big deal. This whole car was sandblasted, and then they put this, uh, this epoxy on or whatever this primer is. Um, like I say, there's some rust, but this sat under a tarp, then it sat for a few years in a garage, and then one of those tent garages, which, you know, they condensate. So it's kind of good that you have some somewhere to put stuff. But if you live in Ontario like I do in the winter, you know, you got to keep in mind condensation. You're almost better with the tent garages if you're going to park something like this in one. Get one that's too long for your needs and leave the ends open so air can blow through. And maybe, maybe that's better than the condensation inside. But uh, all in all, you know, I don't got to worry about that because I'm not painting this car. But all in all, I mean, look at it, like, really clean it up a bit. This is a super nice car. Um... A shell like this can easily go for 20 to 25 grand. Now, I know that sounds expensive, but if you break it down, the new doors, the new quarters, quarters, a few hundred apiece. Not sure what the doors are, but you can go online and find all that, add it up yourself. The hood. Um, now, the front fenders are just primed in black. 
they're original fenders and one actually has a little thing welded in the back. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> playing in the dust. But anyway, so those aren't aftermarket, but you can buy those aftermarket. Uh, the rad support, I'm not sure where it's from, but the back of this panel, this panel and this panel, it's got the uh, little stickers on that would indicate Dynacorn. Uh, as does the trunk lid, I believe. So all this stuff is available. Um, now you're going to see videos on Dynacorn and they're going to tell you the parts don't fit and the parts do. Um, I done a rear set of quarters just like this, which we brought right up to here, just off the line. What they call 80% quarters in the trade, right? Because you don't get it up to the back window and it was on a coupe. Um, my quarters kind of fit okay, but what you got to keep in mind with the 80% quarters, where they fold here and stuff, it's not awesome. Now these were what they call complete convertible quarters. So there's no seam here where it was welded. They didn't weld it in here. I believe it comes right to here. You get all this with it. This is where they would have put it together. And to know that for sure, hmm. Let me get a light. Because everybody always says they went with the full quarter. And if you know me, I don't tend to believe it. Because you know, people will say things in their story, especially when the cars get uh, passed around. But if I go way up to where you can see, you can't see anywhere where the fender was put together. Um, which is great. That's all like that black EDP Dynacorn stuff on the back of that fender. So that's pretty cool. And of course, the body and paint shop, I imagine, you see junk in there from it sitting. It's not really rust though, it's just dirt and junk. But anyway, that should all be like vacuumed out and cleaned up. We'll probably vacuum it before we even do the bottom because we don't want any of this blowing around in our booth. Um, but all this stuff here is going to have to be treated or sandblasted and primed. But uh, stuff like that. It actually looks as though... That's original, which kind of makes sense because if we come under here, how does this look? You're looking at it with me. So the info I gave earlier is what I was told, but you can see that weld right there, another one there. So that could be where they welded. I wonder what it's like under here. So I can't see this. I'm going to have to check it out later. But it feels pretty good. I'm going to say that this piece is original. And then from here out is a new outer wheelhouse. And if you go down to the bottom, you can see a couple little patches on the piece that was original. But then the wheelhouse where the weld is... Yeah, those welds kind of suck, but anyway, it's on there. Yeah, these didn't have a lot of stuff on them and no one primed them. So see, this is what uh, that black coating that comes on your panels. It don't like being outside or condensated or whatever. But you can see the red of the car in here. So anyway, at any rate, this is a really solid car. Yeah, you're looking at uh, 20, 25 grand to get something that's trashed to this way. But if you take your time, you learn a little bit of MIG welding, you can build a jig for this car specifically. Watch a lot of YouTube videos. There's a good example of a guy building a Firebird and what he found was even with the best of the best panels, he couldn't get these gaps to fit right. And it turned out that with these cars, when you build the jig, sometimes at the back you got to put a little spacer in to lift it and everything lines up. Uh, which is something only a guy with uh, way too much experience would know who's done a few of them and one day he did one and it didn't work. Um, the cool thing now, we've got enough info out there, just use a bit of common sense, watch the videos, somebody will show you every trick to how to fix stuff. And at the end of the day, it's only metal. If it don't fit good, you can always do a little bit of cut and paste. But uh, try not to, 
try to think it through. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. And, I mean, this was lined up by what was supposed to be a professional shot. Now, the doors could be adjusted a little bit better, but all in all, the gaps are okay. Here's not quite right, so, you know, might have to weld the edge of the door to make that fit or split the quarter, knock it into fit, and then re-weld it. So the other side, I think, was better. Let's have a look at that. Pull that out flush. Yeah, so way up near my thumb it's big, but the rest is uh, actually more to where you'd roughly want it to be when you were done. So you can do this. Don't be afraid of it. Buy the parts, learn to weld. Anyway, it's kind of a boring video, but I also thought it was kind of cool because of the stuff that's kind of coming up with this uh, sort of weird ask as far as for me to do this job. But, uh, yeah, it's a neat car, so thanks for watching. Cheers.